Would you please be upstanding as we come and worship God? We'll sing, give thanks. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please be seated. Before we continue on, I just want to let the younger ones, the parents, if you want your children to have a, a special children's activities, we call it Kids in the Uniting Church, see that beautiful person over there, Andy. And if you trust him, Andy will look after the young ones. Doesn't matter how young, Andy can handle them in another room so we can have a more concentration him here. Andy, and Andy is preparing some special activities for the young ones. That's okay if they want to stay here with me. Beautiful. I'll make sure that I'll keep you in cage. Good choice. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pirate Central Uniting Church worship service on Sunday, the 25th of June, 2023. Welcome to you all who are here at the church and also to those who are joining us online. I want to make a special welcome to Bailey James Holland, whom we are going to baptize into the family of God this morning. We welcome Bailey together with his family, relatives, and friends. And I want to commend Bailey's parents for their decision to baptize Bailey this morning, and we are glad that they are here so we can baptize their child. We are cruising in the season of Pentecost, the longest season of a liturgical year. Friends, during the season of Pentecost, followers of Jesus Christ, known as Christians, are encouraged to proclaim, to witness, and to share God's good news in words and in deeds to all people in words and actions and to all nations as well. Acknowledgement of the traditional custodians. For thousands of years, indigenous people have walked and cared for this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives. We acknowledge the Wadawarang people of the Kulin nations and their stewardship of this land through the ages. We pay our sincere respect to their elders, past, present, and imagining. 
May this be a safe land for all people in all of our diversity so that we can gather together. Friends, this week's scripture challenges us to reflect upon the power of dynamics that play in our context and how we are called as people of faith to live into Jesus' call of turning tables, disrupting the status quo, and giving voice to those who are voiceless and silent. Our identity as Christians' disciple means we share a calling and a purpose not always welcomed by this world, but we are called as a community to disrupt. Last Thursday, the Uniting Church celebrated its 46th anniversary. Since 1977, when three denominations came together to form the Uniting Church. And I believe the Uniting Church has been a church that was called to disrupt and speak against injustices. And when things are not right, the Uniting Church are called to identify these wrongs and try to make it right. Our theme for this morning, community that disrupts. And let us continue with our call to worship. In days of trouble, we call out to God. In times of distress, we ask how we can help. When hope feels forgotten, we wonder why it must be this way. In times of division, we ask what can be healed. In these days, we turn to each other and we listen for God. Let us pray. God of sparrows and elephants, of earth and sky, of the great and the small, wander with us about transformation and division. Wonder with us about the peace we imagine and the disruptive peace about which Jesus spoke. Wonder with us today and always, loving us and caring for us through every question and possibility. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we are going to sing our next hymn, Community of Christ.
Let us come before God with our prayer of confession. And the scripture reminds us that if we say we have no sins, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not with us. But if we come before our loving God and confess our sins, truly we will receive forgiveness. And let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving God, we are uncomfortable. We would rather skip over the awkwardness of any disruption. And at times we prefer things as they are, and we don't want to turn the world upside down. We want it to be enough that you know the numbers of hairs on each head and value every sparrow. That knowledge is too wonderful for us. But you push us to ask questions about what peace means in our time. You urge us to challenge, and we confess we'd rather just let it be. O oh God, come into our discomfort and encourage us with your love. Whisper to us that you continue to journey with us in peaceful and also in disruptive times. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, a word of affirmation this morning is a song affirmation from Together in Song 323. Holy, 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 please remain seated. Let us share our choice, concerns, and our notices, and what will lead us. Good morning, friends. Good morning, Rod. Firstly, a word about everybody's favorite topic, heating. As you no, and will sorely appreciate there have been some experiments with the heating over the last couple of Sundays. Uh, we've put them to one side because we have been pretty much abject failures. Um, 
to a large degree, but we think we've found some other solutions which relate to the timing of the automatic heating. Uh, it'll take a little while to get that sorted out. Um, there are some other issues which probably need to be look, looked at there as well, so bear with us. A wheelchair. Does anybody know where one could find a wheelchair if we needed it in the middle of the service? Yes, Ron. That's correct. Behind that door where Ron is sitting, there is a wheelchair. So if for some occurrence when you're present and a wheelchair is needed, that's where it is. It can be brought straight down the ramp and into use. Friends, another reminder of the one day book fair that's coming up on Saturday the 8th of July uh, and that uh, will support, as always, Breezeway and Lifeline. On sale, uh, adult fiction books at only $1 each. So if you could advertise this amongst family, friends and other networks, that would be appreciated. Today at five o'clock, you're invited to join Andy and the team for our monthly evening family service. This morning, we have a retiring offering and the plate is uh, over near the exit into the pit wing and that will be in support of the Ballarat Regional Healthcare Chaplaincy. This morning, of course, all are invited to join us in, at morning tea. Not only are we celebrating the 46th anniversary of the Uniting Church, we will also be joining with the baptismal family and celebrating in today's baptism. And finally, this morning, on behalf of you all, I would like to wish Liletti safe travelling as he journeys tomorrow to Tonga. Uh, Laletti is engaging with some members of Rotary in Ballarat and they are going on a uh, dental health mission, providing some services and equipment and also other services uh, for child, childhood education as well to, to, to people in Tonga. So we wish Laletti safe travels and we'll see him back in two weeks time. Thank you. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp to our feet. A light to our path. Romans 6, verses 1b to 11. Shall we go on sinning that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Jesus Christ, were baptised into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in death like this, we will also be united with him in a resurrection like this. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus.
Matthew 10, 24 to 39. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like their teacher and servants like their master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? So, do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be members of his old household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their sons or daughters more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. 
Whoever finds their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Lord, may your word live in us. And bear much fruit to your glory. Let us pray. And may the word of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Hence up those who, um, who follow football. Football? Yes. And I believe that most of us this morning, we all know what football is all about. Hands up those who know this other kind of football known as rugby union. One, thank you, Pat. Rugby union, two, three, yes, yes. Because I want to share with you, I did play rugby union and I shared it with you before. In rugby union, there is a position known as a winger. A winger is someone that really on the sideline on the other side. If this is where the scrums and the rucks happen in here, out in the wing near the sideline, that's the winger. I used to play as a winger. And at the end of the games, I walked out from the football match my chamba was, still, was still very clean. Why I didn't engage in any sort of a rough play? So I played as a winger for many years, and then they wanted me, Laledi, we want you to play as a prop. A prop is the three front person in a scrum. And in every part of the match, the prop will be the one that really engage with the, with the other team. Friends, I have to tell you that after a few games, when I was playing as a prop, my chamba was dirty. I got black eye. And on my head as well were marks of the shoe studs as well because some people, they rock on my head. And guess what? I play longer time as a winger. And when they want me to play as a prop, only a few years. And I was still young when I said, retire. community that disrupts. And I want to, um, to, to ask you, friends, when you feel that there is something happening and you really can't sleep, and something that is happening in the church and challenges the church mission and ministry, and you are really engaged as a prop in a scrum, in a rugby union, and maybe after that one, you feel that you have a black eye, mind you, and few stats on the head as well, because you really, really engage. And I wonder if this is what we heard from the reading from Matthew this morning. About in a family, we try to make sure that it's settled down. But this reading is saying, no, 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 no. There is something that should be happening. And I wonder if this is what happened in Jesus' time. About 2,000 years ago, Jesus was really well known in challenging the status quo. When people are not able to speak up, why? Because they are the minority and they don't want to disrupt the peaceful situation of the community and even the church leaders, Jesus really challenged them. And Jesus challenged the leaders, the Pharisees, 
and the rabbis as well, because they were teaching something that is not godly as well. And today we have the reading that that is what Jesus recorded in Matthew is trying to challenge the followers and members of Jesus' church to do as well. Friends, I wonder to, if you are aware that um, Christians can be seen as troublemakers. Christians can be seen as troublemakers. For some years, Christians have been very vocal and very straight in challenging the injustices that are happening in the community that are happening in the world. And Jesus' followers are really well known in challenging all these things. One great thing, and I think I have mentioned it many times as well. You know, when we grew up in Tonga, we were taught that male and men are higher than women. And Jesus' good news are saying, we are different, male and female are different, but we are all equal as well. And also in our community as well, younger ones are discouraged from saying what they are thinking about. Wait until your time, wait until you grow up, and then you are able to say. And Christ's message is saying, no, 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 even they are still younger we are different, they are younger, we are more matured, but we are all equal. And we have to listen and also learn from the young ones as well. How many times we heard that young ones should learn from the older ones? That's really great and really true. And I wonder if Jesus' message is also saying, older ones learn from the younger ones. This is what's really great in a Barrett Central as well. You remember when we have the young ones and they're running around. Feel sorry for those who have been making noises, but that's really great. We learn from them as well because I think when I was much younger, I was worse than them. I don't know about others as well. But I believe that is Jesus' news as well to challenge and disrupt too. Church's fundamental call to disrupt the wrongs. I think this is what has been happening in the church. Sometimes we see things and we don't want to challenge those things because we want to keep the peace. But today we are reminded that we also need to disrupt what is not happening in the, our community as well. And I believe that I mentioned it a few times that we have been disruptive in challenging the issue of homelessness in Ballarat as well. And we are also challenged and disrupt the issues of asylum seekers in the world as well. And I'm really glad that it's also mentioned as well because it's not really clear in Australia. And I think you know that I will be traveling to Tonga tomorrow after 10 years. And I have been told that the rising of the sea level is an issue in Tonga. I have to witness that. And that is what we are very vocal because that is God's call to voice out and to challenge the Australians and the way that we live and disrupt the way that we live. Maybe we might be feeling cold as I am, but that is the disruption that is needed. Otherwise, our young ones and our grandchildren will be struggling in the world. To spoke against injustices in the society and in the world. I have this question that I invite us to think about. Is the church too friendly with the society? We are too close with the society and we are not able to challenge the society of what is going not too well. 
And some of the things that are happening with the homeless people, with those who are hungry, I was told because they spent a lot on pokies, machines, they spend the money that they were given on bogies as well. And I wonder if the church is not loud enough in challenging about bulky machines and gambling in our society. But we have been called and encouraged to disrupt the way that we live because that is God's call for us. All the society has tamed the church. We are not able to tell and say something and what is happening in the society because we are not able to say it as the world has been taming us. We, the church, are the mouth, the hands, the feet and the eyes and ears of God in the society and the world today. Friends, this is our call. We have to proclaim God's good news and even that good news of, of God might disrupt the peace that we are encouraging and experiencing in the society. On Thursday, we celebrated the 46th anniversary of the Uniting Church. And also, we are going to watch this video. And this video is the 46th anniversary message of our president, Reverend Sharon Hollis, reminding us of who we are and reminding us of our call as well. And in this video, we will see that the Uniting Church has disrupted the world and the society in the last 46 years. I invite us to sit back and reflect on this video, reminding us members of the Uniting Church, of who we are, as we have been all called by God into God's mission and ministry. The fundamental questions have to be answered afresh. Where do you come from? Where are you going? Who are you? Are you and I prepared to find our bearings afresh? 46 years ago, we embarked on a new and courageous journey into union, a response to God's new thing, a call to find our bearings afresh. Almost five decades later, the world and the church are vastly different to the one imagined at union. At this moment, we must listen anew to the invitation to find ourselves in God's story and speak in fresh ways about who we are and where we are going. Across the Uniting Church today, including through the Act 2 project, many are wondering, what is God's new thing for today? Who are we? How must we change? The challenge that rang out at Sydney Town Hall and across the Uniting Church in 1977 echoes even now. Are you and I willing to courageously answer Christ's call in this time and place? This year, will we accept the generous invitation of the Uluru Statement to walk together as first and second peoples into a better future? Will we allow our deep commitment to the covenant to make room for First Nations voice and self-determination? Will we be shaped by God's inclusive life and hospitality, proclaiming that there is room for all in the wide open space of God's love? Will we receive with joy the rich gifts of the LGBTIQA community? And will we seek to be better allies of those on the margins? Will we continue to rejoice in the beautiful multicultural tapestry of our church and nation as a gift from God standing against violence, racism and exclusion? Will we grapple faithfully with the changes over the last four decades, trusting that even smaller and more marginal, we can still be a faithful witness in this land? Might we make peace with the possibility that some things in our life will need to die in order that new things can come to birth? 
Will we commit anew to sharing with others what life in Christ means to us? Nurturing and growing disciples, supporting faith to flourish in new ways. Giving thanks for the witness of those who went before us, can we forge a new future in hope, a future of faithful innovation, discipleship and community? Let us say yes to God's call, knowing that we are led into the future by God's wild, transforming spirit. Happy 46th anniversary, Uniting Church. Let us give thanks to God for all that is past and trust God for all that is to come. Let us pray. As we journey on the 47th year of the Uniting Church, O oh gracious God, we pray that may we continue to be open for your guidance and we continue to discern your will for your church, especially for the Uniting Church and for our congregation here at Ballarat Central Uniting Church. May in the power of the Holy Spirit, you continue to renew and bring transformation to the church in which you have called into your mission and your ministry. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, please remain seated as your offering for the work and mission and ministry of God in and through Parrot Central Uniting Church will now be received. Please remain seated as we sing our next hymn. And during the last verse, I invite you to please be upstanding. Make me a channel of your peace.
Let us pray. Great and loving God who hears the cries of all people and who proclaims each and every one of us to be of great worth, take these gifts we offer, money, food, talents, time, and water. May our giving help your church proclaim the gospel of justice and truth worldwide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Praise for others. If you were busy, O Lord, you would not bother with us, but you have time to listen, so we praise you for having all things in proportion and a time in your silence for us to speak. If you were wiser, Lord, you would not bother with us, but you are foolish through love, and thus we are your choice. So we praise you that your interests are indeed upside down to ours, that your standards are not the world's standards, that you have bent down to touch us. If you were content, Lord, you would not bother with us, but you are restless through anger, through excitement, and through love. And you will all things to change and be made new. So we praise you that your restlessness has been born in us as pain for the world. Through the cries of your people, through the urgency of your gospel, and through the gift of your Holy Spirit, upset our easiness and inspire us to respond. Amen. Now we will say the Lord's Prayer. In heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our time as we forgive those who sin against us. And us from the ground. For that kingdom and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Friends, let us continue with the highlight of our worship service this morning when we are going to baptize Bailey James Holland as their parents, Brock and Amanda, are bringing their second child. We baptized the older ones some time ago, and this morning we are going to baptize Bailey. As we continue and worship and baptize Bailey, let us sing, Father welcomes all his children.
Please be seated. Friends, the Church Council of this congregation has received a request for the baptism of Bailey James Holland from Amanda and Brock Holland. These important decisions have been prayerfully and carefully considered and I'm glad to welcome them here today. Muriel, thank you. And we have few photos for this presentation have been provided by the family. Yes. Few photos of Bailey. Yes, he's starting to crawl there. Yeah, we can see you there, yes. Renunciation and affirmation. Amanda and Brock, what do you ask of God's church for Bailey? Bailey has been brought for baptism that he may be crafted into Christ as a member of his body, the church, to grow up into the faith of Jesus Christ and become his faithful witness and servant. Bailey? May the Lord open your ears to hear his word and your mouth to proclaim his praise. Look at that stare. I think he's aware of what Lauletti is saying. Hear the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am always with you to the close of the age. And the meaning of baptism. Baptism is Christ's gift. It is the sign by which the Spirit of God joins people to Jesus Christ and incorporates them into his body, the church. In his own baptism in the Jordan by John, Jesus identified himself with humanity in its brokenness and sin. That baptism was completed in Jesus' death and resurrection. By God's grace, baptism blunts us into the faith of Jesus Christ so that whatever is his may be called ours. By water and the Spirit we are claimed as God's own and set free from the power of sin and death. Thus claimed by God, we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit that we may live as witnesses to Jesus Christ, share his ministry in the world, and grow to maturity, awaiting with hope the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Uniting Church in baptizing children takes responsibility for their instruction and nourishment in the faith, that we may know that you hold the Christian faith and claim your membership in Christ's church. We ask you, Amanda and Brock, do you repent of your sins? Do you turn to Jesus Christ who has defeated the power of sin and death and brought us new life? Do you commit yourself to God trusting in Jesus Christ as Savior in the Holy Spirit as God's power and presence along the way? In unity with the whole church, let us stand and affirm the faith into which we were baptized. And I invite you, if you are able to, Please be upstanding. Do you believe in God who made you and loves you? I believe in God, Father Almighty, Do you believe in Jesus Christ, your Savior and Lord? I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Again, 
Do you believe in the Holy Spirit and the continuing work of our salvation? Please be seated. Let us pray. God of life, through the breaking of waters and the coming of the Spirit, you bring us new birth. You give the living water which becomes in us an eternal spring, quenching our thirst, flowing through us and refreshing us for eternal life. Washed and cleansed, we are called into service with Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, bless this water and bailey to be baptized in it, that he may be born anew, live in your light all his days, and come to share your likeness in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Bailey, for you Jesus Christ has come, has lived, has suffered. For you, Jesus has endured the agony of Gethsemane and the darkness of Calvary. For you, Jesus has uttered the cry, it is accomplished. For you, Jesus has triumphed over death. For you, Jesus prays at God's right hand. In baptism, the word of the, the apostle is fulfilled. We love because God first loved us. I'll test the water and see if it's still warm enough. I think it's warm enough. You can bring him here. Yes, and put him. uh, Yes. Bailey James Holland, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I invite the parents to put some water on Bailey, please. Bailey, from this day on, the sign of the cross is upon you. And I invite the parents to draw the sign of the cross on Bailey's forehead, please. Can I invite you, if you are able to, please be upstanding. Bailey is now received into the Holy Catholic Universal Church according to Christ's command, and you may applaud. And let us continue and sing the ironic blessing while Bailey will be brought to the congregation for your special acknowledgement and blessing. You may please be seated. And the responses, Brock and Amanda, 
I ask you now to respond to God's graciousness to Barry by making these solemn promises. Will you provide for your child a Christian home of love and trust? Will you set before Bailey the example of a Christian life? And will you pray that he will learn the way of Christ? Will you encourage your child to grow within the fellowship of the church so that he may come to faith in Christ? Do the court parents, thank you. Corey Holland and Dalana Buckley. Will you support and help Brock and Amanda to encourage their child Bailey to grow within the fellowship of the church so that he may come to faith in Christ? To all of you who are here today and people of this congregation, if you are able to, please be upstanding. I charge you as representatives of all of God's people to maintain the life of worship and service that Bailey and his brother Caden and all the children among you may grow in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the knowledge and love of God. God can help. We believe that we have that chism as a loving community in Christ, nurturing one another in faith, upholding one another in prayer, and encouraging one another in service. Please be seated. And let us pray. Almighty God, we praise you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for declaring your love for Bailey today. You have loved him from the beginning. Continue to protect and guide him. May he become a loyal disciple of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your goodness to Brock and Amanda and Caden. Grant your blessing upon their home and help Brock and Amanda to keep the promises they have made. We pray for ourselves, who so easily forget your grace, that by sharing this mystery, we may recall our own baptism and continue to walk in the light of Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Praise be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bailey, you belong to Christ, the light of the world. On behalf of your, of your God's family, we present you with a Bible, which is God's word, as a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. We present to you a baptismal certificate, and this baptism is being agreed to by the Christian churches on the back of the certificate. We present to you a candle as a symbol of Christ's light. The candle can be lit on your birthday or baptismal anniversary to remind you that you are a child of God. Let your light shine before the world that all may see your good works and give glory to our Father who is in heaven. God bless you always. Thank you very much, Muriel. I hope you won't mind remaining here because during the dismissal song, we'll light a Bailey's candle from Christ's candle and Bailey will lead us out to the beard wing for our morning tea. Can I invite you to please be upstanding for the word of mission and our final blessing. Friends, go into the world without fear. Go and call out God's name, knowing that love will meet you. Steadfast love will lead you through every question and every wondering. God's love carries us through every disruption. Do not be afraid to change the world. God's peace goes before you now and always. And our sung dismissal blessing this morning 
is may the feet of God walk with you.